In this video, we'll take a look at how to perform firmware upgrade for an IP phone from older enterprise firmware to newer enterprise firmware using a local TFTP server. First item we're going to look at is the actual environment set up to perform the IP phone firmware upgrade via TFTP server. We're going to look at the actual workflow, what steps do we actually need to perform. And then we'll take a look at the XML default.cnf file as far as the contents of the file. Our setup is fairly simple. We have our IP phone. In this example, we're using a Cisco phone 7861. This is the enterprise version. It has older firmware. We're going to be upgrading it to newer firmware. We have it at .82 IP address. On the same network, we have a PC Windows 10 at dot 53 it is running software tftp d64 and it's going to be acting as the tftp d server the phone itself um, using the 2e telephony user interface um, we can go in and set up an alternative tftp server and to do that we'll press the settings button on the phone itself which is like a gear symbol button once we do that, the next step, we're going to press 4, which is Admin Settings. Then the next menu we get, we're going to have Option 1, which is Network Setup. And then within the Network Setup, we press Option 1 again, which will be IPv4 Setup. And then within this menu, Option 6, we're going to have Alternative TFTP Setup. We're going to make sure we set that to yes. And then the next item with this same menu area is going to be option 7. And this is where we actually tell the phone what IP address the TFTP server is at. In this case, we said it was dot .53. So we're going to enter in this IP address, 192.168.1.53. And then we want to check a couple of things within the actual TFTP D64 app. We want to make sure we are pointing the current directory to the actual folder on a PC where we've actually unzipped the phone binaries. So in this case, we have the located on our desktop. And then within our desktop, we created a folder called TFTP. And then once we unzip that, there's another folder which actually carries the name of the series of the phone, 78XX. The version we're going to be updating to, 12-8-1-0101-482. And then we also want to make sure the PC is on a, it's basically reachable from the phone, vice versa. So we just want to make sure this is showing that it's binding to the correct IP address. With uh, newer versions of TFTP D64 and also the 32-bit variant of this software, um, one thing to be careful of is DHCP typically is turned on. Most cases, you will already have a DHCP server on the network, so you probably want to disable that. But for this specific task, the only thing we really need enabled is the TFTP server service. And again, this will be under the global settings for the TFTP D64 app, or if you're using a 632 variant of this app, it'll have a very similar layout and a menu structure. If we go into the actual TFTP tab, we really don't need to change anything. We'll just leave the settings default, so security standard, and then the other three options as you notice here they're just default options leave them as is and then we're now looking within the actual folder on our desktop so this is our desktop tftp folder we created and then in here this is where we actually unzip the binary we download from the cisco site and the key there's two key files here so the actual file that the XML file is going to be pointing to, which is this file right here, for the actual loads, which gives additional information for the binaries that the phone needs to fetch and upload it into itself. So we first want to find out what is the actual name of the loads file. 
Then we want to go ahead and update this XML default.cnet file. <clears throat> One thing to be aware is this file actually was uh, originally uh, fetched from a CUCM server. In this example, we do not have a CUCM server, but this is where the original XML file came from. And then the only thing we're really modifying this XML file is we'll find the actual phone we're trying to update the firmware for. In this case, it's a 7861 phone. And we're going to make sure that the file name for the downloads file is what we have entered right here. Notice that the extension downloads is not needed, just the actual main name of the file. And this is basically all that's needed to get us ready to perform the actual firmware update via TFTP. We're going to go in and take a look at the uh, current firmware the phone has before we perform the firmware update to newer enterprise firmware. And as we can see, it has a uh, fairly old firmware 10 2 1. And this is a SIP 7800 series firmware. Next, we're going to take a look at the actual settings for the alternative TFTP within the phone itself. Okay, we have it enabled. Alternative TFTP, yes. And then our alternative TFTP server at dot 53. Okay, the phone has started fetching the binaries from the TFTP server. This process uh, does take a number of minutes. Um, so just let the phone go ahead and process the different files it needs to fetch and upload on board. And um, generally, once it completes fetching all the needed files, you'll pretty much see that no more files are being fetched from TFTP, at which point the phone itself will reboot itself. Once it reboots and comes back up and uh, goes back into runtime, you can go back into the menu and check to see that it's actually updated the firmware to the newer enterprise firmware. Okay, the phone has rebooted. We'll go ahead and take a look at the information to validate that the phone has successfully updated to new enterprise firmware. Okay, it has 12-8-1 12, 12 0101. Okay. We're just going to go back and take a look at the um, XML file. Um, and uh, if you need, if you don't have this file, you need to take a look at the contents of the file. What you can do is you can actually stop the video. I'm going to go back and I'm going to show all the different areas of the actual XML file. This XML file was originally sourced from um, CUCM 12.5.0. And um, it has um, a long list of different um, phones that uh, is supported under CUCM. So again, um, if you need to look at the contents of this file as I kind of scroll through the file, feel free to stop and take a look at any portion of the file if you need to recreate it yourself if you don't have access to CUCM. But in any case, um, 
Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully this video helps you with the firmware upgrade from older enterprise firmware to newer enterprise firmware. And um, good luck with your firmware upgrade. Thank you. Bye.